Welcome back to the ultimate Middle Eastern Economy Class Smackdown finale. The past few weeks, we've seen what Qatar Airways, Emirates and Turkish Airlines have to offer. And today, we'll be tallying the scores and crowning a winner. How will the airlines compare and will the winners surprise you? Let's find out. Over to you, Dan. If you haven't already watched the individual reviews of each airline, I encourage you to pause this video, watch those for some important context, and then return here. Before we continue, comment below which airline you think will win because I'm curious to see if you guys can guess correctly based solely on the reviews. This comparison will be broken down in a far more structured way than non-sub Dan viewers will be used to. The categories I'll be scoring them on in no particular order are seat comfort, cabin ambiance, catering, service, entertainment, and hub airports. The top airline in each category will be awarded 3 points, the middle will get 2 and the bottom will get 1. If there's a category that only applies to one airline because it's an amenity only they offer, they will receive 2 points. If any airlines are equal, they get 1 point each, and the remaining airline depending on if it's better or worse will get 3 or 0. So let's dive right in. As I mentioned in the reviews, I'm quite tall at 187 centimeters. That's six foot two for those of you who don't speak metric. So the legroom will be better for many of you than it was for me. Now, I didn't bring a measuring tape because I may be unusual in my love for planes, but I'm not that unusual. The legroom comparison is based basically on my impression from sitting in each seat for hours on end. Now we have two airlines that are quite close here, but the clear last place goes to Turkish Airlines, who frankly have pretty atrocious legroom for a long haul aircraft. Emirates lands in second place with far more legroom than Turkish, although it gets quite limited when you recline, since the seat cushion slides forward a lot. Then, of course, our tall place for legroom goes to Qatar Airways. Their legroom is the best of the three, but it's still not great when compared to Singapore Airlines or Japanese Airlines. Next up in seat comfort is recline. In this category, they are all pretty much equal, and as always in economy, it's quite difficult to get any work done on a laptop if the passenger in front of you reclines on any of these airlines. I guess that's a good excuse to watch movies, actually. The last element of seat comfort is not so significant, but it makes a difference your storage space, at least the only hygienic place to store stuff the seat back pocket. Here, Qatar Airways wins again with their dual exterior pockets, which I love. Emirates has one pocket on the outside, which is also good compared to the standard seat pocket on Turkish. It's normal, yes, but not as good as the other two. So, so far, in the seat comfort category, Qatar Airways has won two subcategories and tied in one, giving them a total of seven points. Meanwhile, Emirates has come in second and tied in one for a total of five points, while Turkish Airlines has three points. So, once your butt is firmly placed in your seat of varying comfort, you'll probably start looking around. Now, different airlines take cabin design to different lengths, and even between these three, the difference is dramatic. Here, we have a clear winner in all three subcategories that I defined. Let's look at Turkish Airlines first. What do we think about this cabin design? Does it feel classy, relaxing, inviting? No but it does look like they skinned the Teletubbies and used them to upholster the seats. There are no further design elements and the only lighting you'll enjoy is yellow. At Qatar Airways, mood lighting wasn't used on my 777 flight and the sea colors are nice, but when the colors are this dark, it can make the cabin feel a little bit dreary. This brings us to our clear winner here, Emirates. They use mood lighting a lot, which makes the whole experience more relaxing. I love the beige seats that feel clean and brighten the cabin, and they have something that the other airlines didn't, sand dunes on the bulkhead and stars in the ceiling, both of which contribute to making the flight feel slightly more bearable, since they remove you from the reality of being in a big bulky metal tube. I mean, I love these metal tubes, but they're still metal tubes. So to tally the points from this category, Emirates takes the lead since they were the only airline with cabin design beyond the seat and the only airline to utilize mood lighting, so they get two points for each of those. They also won on seat design, giving them three points for a new total of 12. Meanwhile, Qatar Airways comes in second for their seat design, bringing their total to nine. And last, and unfortunately least, Turkish Airlines comes in with one additional point for a total of four. 
Next category is catering. As you know, I always order vegan meals, which I think is a good view into how seriously the airline takes catering overall. Some will throw you grilled vegetables, while others have creative approaches to it. Firstly, it's very rare to get menus in economy class, but both Qatar Airways and Emirates have them. It's much appreciated and they are tied in that respect. Turkish does not have menus. I will say that all these airlines do have excellent catering among the best in the world, so it's difficult to distinguish. The meal quality on all airlines was on par, but one airline served slightly more food than the others. On both Turkish and Qatar, I thought the portions were quite small. While Emirates served a little bit more, so Emirates takes the lead while Qatar Airways and Turkish are tied. When it comes to drinks, Qatar has the best selection, with Emirates in second and Turkish unfortunately last again. Finally, how many snacks were provided? Well, unfortunately, not only does Turkish Airlines have tiny portions, but they also didn't serve any snacks on my flight. Life is just miserable without snacks, what are they trying to do? Qatar and Emirates both serve nuts, potato chips, popcorn, and more, and are equal in that regard. So we have four separate sections to compare here. Menus, food, drinks, and snacks. For menus, Emirates and Qatar Airways are tied, so they both earn one point each. Catering is won by Emirates, who gets three points, while the other two are tied and get one each. In terms of drinks, Qatar Airways steals three points, Emirates two, and again, Turkish Airlines gets one. Last but not least, another tied category, a very important one at that, because what is a flight without snacks, where Emirates and Qatar Airways also get one additional point each. So our new totals, with Emirates adding 7 points for a total of 19, Qatar adding 6 points for a total of 15, and Turkish adding a mere 2 points for a total of 6. Can the service turn this around? Before that, we have a message from today's video sponsor, NordVPN. Now wait, don't go. This is genuinely an important message for anyone who doesn't use a VPN on a frequent basis. Think of NordVPN as a bouncer outside a nightclub, keeping everyone who's underage and too drunk out, except this bouncer is friendly. When you're connected to public Wi-Fi networks, there is no bouncer and underage people are streaming into your club, unless you use a VPN to protect yourself. That's the main benefit of a VPN, but there are many more, including unlocking content and services that are country specific. For example, many of the services I use on a daily basis to talk to people I love are unavailable in the Middle East, even if I'm only connecting flights there. But NordVPN saves the day by allowing me to change countries to a different location. My body may be in Qatar, but for all the internet knows, my phone is in the US. You can get 73% off a two year membership and four months free at nordvpn.com slash nonstop dan. Now that's an affordable bouncer to keep the bad guys out. What a party! Speaking of friendly bouncers, how are the flight attendants on Qatar, Emirates, and Turkish? In this category, service, I'll include bedding and hygiene kits as well since I guess they sort of belong to this soft product category. First of all, the service on the three airlines couldn't be more different. On Qatar Airways, it is extremely professional, while it's fun and laid back on Emirates. If both are performed well, I have a slight preference for the Emirates service model in economy, and a slightly stronger preference for the Qatar Airways service model when when flying premium cabins. Overall, I'd say the quality of those airline service is about equal since this comes down to personal preference. Again, Turkish Airlines unfortunately ranks last since the service was unmemorable at best. Considering the crew hid in the galley for most of the flight, after raising the temperature and making everyone close their window blinds so that we'd pass out. Speaking of passing out, Qatar and Emirates provide pillows and blankets, both of which are fine but nothing really special. So they're both equal there. Turkish Airlines weirdly provides one blanket per three seats, which is just completely illogical. And there are no pillows. But surprise, surprise, there's one category where Turkish Airlines wins. They're excellent hygiene kits with two masks, wipes, and hand sanitizer. Qatar also provides kits, although these only contain one mask, and Emirates hands out masks and sanitizer more casually without using kits altogether. So we have two ties giving Emirates and Qatar Airways two additional points each for service and bedding. 
Turkish Airlines is below them in this tie, so they can't get one point as well. So instead, we give them zero for those two categories, but they get a whopping three points for their hygiene kit. So Turkish has a new total of nine, Qatar Airways has a new total of 19, and Emirates is still in the lead with a total of 22. Only one onboard category remains, but this is an important one, especially in economy class, entertainment. Here we have four subcategories and let's make this quick and easy and say that Emirates wins three of them. Two of which they win by light years, screen and headphone quality. The final subcategory of Wi-Fi is won by Qatar Airways who offer Wi-Fi for as little as $8 for a full flight pass. For more details on individual airlines and entertainment, please refer to the individual reviews and it will be very clear. So our points totals from here are 11 additional points for Emirates, 8 additional points for Qatar Airways, and a mere 5 additional points for Turkish, resulting in 14 overall. Now we can't discuss these super connectors without discussing their hubs, and here we have a clear winner and a tie. The winner, Doha's Hamad International Airport, is modern. Easy to navigate, offers a good selection of retail and lounges, along with two transit hotels, and is just the obvious first choice here. Dubai Airport and Istanbul's new airport are both flashy, but they require ridiculous amounts of walking, are confusing to navigate, are either way too sterile in the case of Istanbul, or way too chaotic and overcrowded in the case of Dubai, so both of them are simply best avoided whenever possible. With that, let's calculate our totals. In third place, by a large margin, we have Turkish Airlines who scores a total of 15 points. They're not bad per se, but in this specific specific comparison, they were up against two high quality airlines who unfortunately beat them in all but one category, the hygiene kit. I will be avoiding Turkish in economy class in the future as I hope to be enjoying their business class in the pointy end instead. In second place, we have one of my three favorite airlines, Qatar Airways. The more I fly with them, the more it becomes clear to me that they're an airline that cares slightly more about their premium passengers, which is why premium passengers adore them. For the vast majority of passengers flying economy class, Qatar Airways is still a solid option, and they won many categories with a respectable total of 33 points. I certainly don't mind flying Qatar Airways in economy class, but I will make sure to seek out their A350s, or even better, their new 787-9 for a superior experience. If you're even more lucky, you might get to enjoy their best economy class on the Airbus A380, which is resuming service later in the year, initially on select flights to London and Paris. Speaking of the A380, in first place, with an impressive total of 35, we have Dubai's own Emirates. I must say that they really left me impressed. I don't think I've experienced a better economy class than this west of Singapore. Everything about the experience is high quality, from the modern seats to the catering to the entertainment. The best part is that you can fly the A380 on many routes which offers an even better experience than I had. I knew as soon as I boarded my final flight in this comparison, which happened to be on Turkish Airlines, that Emirates was the clear winner. They really nailed the first impression and everything from that point onwards. Is it worth it to pay a premium to fly them over Qatar Airways? Probably not, but if prices were equal, Emirates would be my first choice for economy class on these three airlines. But is the experience even on Emirates so much better than economy class on many other airlines? It depends. I wouldn't necessarily pay much extra to fly Emirates, especially if there was a non-stop option, but if prices are equal and you want to give them a try, I'd absolutely say it might be worth adding an hour or two to your trip to enjoy this slightly more comfortable experience. On that note, thanks for doing math with me today guys. As always, my flights for these reviews were entirely self-funded and the airlines did not know I was going to be on board. I feel I got a fair and honest comparison so I'm excited to hopefully help you have as awesome a trip as possible wherever you're heading off to next. I really appreciate you guys for coming along on this journey. Thanks to sport presenter Dan for being the most polarizing figure to ever grace my channel and I'll see you all for some fun American and European reviews coming up. Until I see you all next time, fly safe.